In this section, we will start with the LPBAM theoretical part, and we will see a practical example using LPBAM scenario configurator integrated in CubeMX 6.5.0. A quick view of the agenda. We will start with the LPBAM theory, and then we move to the hands-on part with CubeMX realization steps, review of generated code, and we will also run a power measurement using Cube Monitor Power, and short debug session of the low power application we developed. We have just seen that CubeMX version 6.5.0 includes new easy to use graphical configurator for low power background autonomous mode, and we will now focus on LPBAM principles and main feature. LPBAM is the main innovation introduced in STM42U5 to reduce power consumption. It is an operating mode that allows peripheral to be functional and autonomous independently from power mode and without any software running. Transfers are performed thanks to a hardware subsystem embedded in STM32U5 based on the MA. In LPBAM, peripheral can work down to stop to mode thanks to their own independent clock request capability. This is one of the key aspects of LPBAM subsystem mechanism which enable remarkable power savings. In other MCU, we would have to wake up at every DMA transfer complete flag. With LPBAM subsystem, this does not happen. LPDMA hardware automatically manages its own clock gating, so bus and kernel clocks are requested only when needed. This gives great contribution to achieve best optimization of dynamic clock and results into enormous power saving of the overall system. We saw that LPBAM makes use of DMA. STM42U5 includes a new DMAP which has two hardware instances named Low Power DMA and GPDMA. GPDMA and Low Power DMA belong to two different power domains which are CPU domain and Smart RAM domain respectively. Both hardware instances can work with linked list, which is a mode typically used by LPBAM system to chain different actions and build useful functionalities. Here is a list of peripherals supporting LPBAM. They are classified in autonomous and passive depending on their capability to request clock. LPBAM makes use of DMA transfer in linked list mode that can be memory to memory, peripheral to memory or memory to peripheral. Thanks to linked list, DMA can change its configuration runtime. Linked list is a linear data structure which consists in a series of connected nodes and it's used to chain DMA services and it's programmed per channel. Each DMA channel will have defined services by a linked list data structure, which embeds basic tasks to be performed. The hardware loads the node with source destination address and then data transfer is made. The same approach is used on both low power DMA and general purpose DMA. Each DMA transfer has its own configuration stored in an SRAM area. In case of low power DMA, it is SRAM 4, 60k bytes. Each of these stored configuration is named node. Each node is linked to another node in order to define the next transfer configuration. A set of DMA transfer nodes linked to each other builds a queue. When started, the DMA fetches the first node which is called head node, and then the fetching operation is repeated until the last queue node is reached, known as tail node. CubeMX 6.5.0 integrates LPBAM configurator for STM42U5, thanks to the presence of LPBAM utilities, which is a subset of modular drivers located in STM42 CubeU5 firmware pack. In this slide, we can see how the utility folder is linked to CMC's driver, middleware, and HAL. LPBAM utility can access all firmware modules. LPBAM utility exposes layer of drivers with three levels of abstraction, LL, basic, and advanced. Basic and advanced layer are hardware agnostic. Instead, LL layer contain device-specific configuration for each supporter peripheral. We notice that the level of granularity is different, so advanced LPBAM layer will work on queue granularity, instead basic LPBAM layer will work on node granularity. These are the main steps to build an LPBAM application on CubeMX. The tool will help to define scenarios, select the peripheral instances and configure queue. 
Once the queue is configured, we will enter parameters for data and trigger configuration of the peripheral. Four and fifth steps are very similar to what done in standard QBMX configurator. At the end, we can check LP band design. If it's okay, we can generate code. Let's see all these steps in practice with a demonstration.